Okay, we have successfully completed building the serverless web front end. Now it's time to bring the application live in a decentralized internet. How are we going to do that? Well, let me tell you that is not difficult. All I have to do is grab those files, the entire folder structure with all the JS files that we built, the index.html, the public folder, and we will upload that onto IPFS. The moment we do that, we will obtain a CID, okay? So what do we need to do with that CID? Number one, we have to make sure that we open that website using the browser, okay? So we will open the browser, we will point ourselves using the IPFS.io public gateway, point that to the the CID of the folder that we just uploaded. And if everything goes well, we should see the front end loading, okay? So that tells me that I successfully uploaded those files onto IPFS and I have a completely decentralized web front end. With this, I can decide if I want to just provide that URL. Maybe I am connecting this web three application to another web front end. All I have to do is provide a hyperlink in another web front end. Or if we are intending to run this application solo or run this web front end without involving any other web front end, then I have to point the IPFS CID link to a domain record. So if I bought a domain name, let's say my DeFi staking platform.io, I bought that domain name. I need to know how am I going to be connecting that to the IPFS site. Check this out. This is very straightforward. First thing that we're going to do, number one, we have uploaded all the files. We wrote the entire serverless application. Okay, We got all those files. We proceed to upload that to IPFS. We will obtain a CID value. Once we obtain that CID value, I will form that URL path and I will test the front end. I will make sure that I can open that web front end. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash IPFS dot IO forward slash IPFS forward slash CID. We paste that, we press enter and everything goes well we see the web front end loading, okay? If that's successful, then we go into step number two. If you have not bought a domain record or a domain name, you can go to any name register or a web domain name provider, right? Like GoDaddy, for example, you will buy your domain name from there. And once we obtain that domain name, if I bought the domain name using GoDaddy, I am going to head onto the GoDaddy manage page and I will find my domain name. We're gonna head onto the settings and very simple. All I have to do, we will be forwarding any requests to the IPFS.io site that we just tested. We wait a couple of minutes, I'm gonna say literally five minutes, to get the changes replicated across the entire internet. It is very straightforward. It's going to give you the benefit of not hosting anything in a live server environment. So one thing that we need to understand, IPFS will eliminate, will remove your site if you are not pinning those files. You are uploading any file onto IPFS. You have to either run your own IPFS node, that is one option, or if you're not running your own IPFS node, what is IPFS pinning? So what is that all about? So in order for the IPFS blockchain to avoid filling up with a lot of garbage, right? Let's say people decided to start uploading things randomly, that data gets decentralized to get stored across all the nodes that are participating in the IPFS blockchain. And if there's no control of what files are important, then it's just going to keep growing to the point that it's be unsustainable because nodes are not going to be able to keep up with the storage demands, okay? For that, the IPFS protocol has been made with the principle of making sure that the files are tagged, the files are marked to avoid from being purged by the garbage collection. Garbage collection is a process that is run on the background in IPFS that is just going to randomly, I'm going to say at intervals, is going to check if there's any IPFS file not pinned. And by pinning, we are effectively telling the the IPFS blockchain. Hey, this is important and I want to make sure that you don't remove this from the blockchain. And what is the requirement for us to be able to tell the blockchain, the IPFS blockchain, that those files are important and please do not remove them from the blockchain. Let's say you don't have an IPFS node. So in option number two, you can subscribe to IPFS pinning service. Okay. We got many options right now in the Web3 ecosystem. We got Pinata, a Stardom, we got NFT storage. We have many other providers that are giving you the option to pin the files for a small fee. And let me tell you, it is a small fee. It is a very small fee compared to what it will cost to run your own web server, right? And do the maintenance on the web server. So when we subscribe to an IPFS pinning server, all we are going to do, we are going to be uploading those files into that web service provider or the IPFS service provider. 
provider, the moment we upload that, we will obtain the CID. Here's the benefit of that. Didn't have to install our own IPFS node, didn't have to go through that hassle. All we have to do go to the provider, drop those files, obtain the CID, and we will absolutely pin those files there. The service provider is giving you the pinning service. You don't have to worry about the files being lost. And that is it. That's it. That's all we have to do. And we have a completely decentralized run at it. A Web3 application that runs completely on the client side. Alrighty. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed too. Hey, and we'll see you on the next video.